Okay, so as promised, that was the world's worst little history lesson on memory. Uh, moving on to why is memory important. Uh, specifically, what obviously the book has to say about why memory is important. The author asks a particular question, and that is, and I think it's a fairly profound one. I'm sure philosophers over the years have contemplated this one uh, uh, till their ears bled. But what maintains the illusion that there is a continuity of life for humans, for us, from moment to moment? What, what does do that? Uh, and so he asks that question. And then he suggests that whatever that relatively stable thing at the nucleus of our neural network is, it, whatever that element is, it must rely very heavily, if not, you know, uh, entirely on memory uh, otherwise what continuity do we have and for example if you were to take me here at 10 years of age this is representing me uh, and then myself at 25 years of age I'm a biological being over that course of time no molecules or atoms uh, are remain the same at 25 I am completely different from the atom down from the atom up sorry from when I was 10 years old but for memory Otherwise, there's, it's all new me. It's a different person walking around. So that's how important memory seems to be in the core thing, core concept of continuity. Another question he asks is, what if you had no memory? So how important is it? Well, let's see if you, what happens if you have no memory. What kind of person would you be? So he, he, he finds an individual that has no memory, or essentially no memory. He has the last working thought, I believe, still in short-term memory, but otherwise everything's forgotten. And so he interviews this fellow extensively. Uh, and what he does find is that this person does have what he terms a personhood which I guess is some kind of essence of personality uh, so he can have a conversation with him he can feel like he's talking to someone uh, that has their own kind of uniqueness somewhat but this person was n unable to grow unable to learn unable to change and uh, seemed I think in the terms that the author used somewhat hollow and it was a really sad little episode in the book so you know this is how important memory is uh, Again, memory being important in the, f in the concept of invention and, and composition. You know, if you have a, f a few ideas rolling around in your head, it's important to be able to associate those ideas with something and then maybe come up with a new one. I really emphasise this because I, you know, it seems that the book makes a heavy point on it, that you know, the memory is all important in making these new associations and creating new ideas. So invention and composition is super important memory, uh, the role memory plays. A really, really interesting experiment that was conducted by a French chrono biologist I didn't even know that uh, occupation existed but apparently it does a French fellow by the name of Sifri uh, his experiment entailed him disappearing into a cave for two months uh, I know if two months off I'm probably not going into a cave but he did for a particular reason he went in there with no clocks no stimuli and he stayed for two months as I said after two months he was released and uh, I think his first question to his re to the people that released him oh, was why did you let me out after just one month he thought only one month had gone by uh, and that was he was pretty shocked he thought well wow I've been trying to keep counting inside that cave and I've only felt like a month has gone by why his deprived experience had compressed his experience of time and so of time's passage, he felt that it would it had accelerately gone through by a factor of two. So it compressed. He felt like time had gone so quickly that it was out by a month, but he was been in there too. What, so what, so what, so what? Monotony collapses time, novelty unfolds it. That's the comment made in the book. This is the one that kind of came out from this experiment and, and many others, that creating new memories stretches out our perception of time. Our psychological perception of time is stretched out. Uh, and novelty uh, unfolds it and, and makes that it seem like we are actually having richer and longer lives. You know, I think this is one of the central tenets of the book that we can walk away with and think very heavily about. Um, and it's written a, a little bit by a, written about a little fellow, the name of William James, I think it was 1890, Principles of Psychology, I believe the, the book was called. Um, and he makes a similar point in that and I think everyone could agree with this, that as you uh, grow up, your memories seem to be very rich when you're young and there seem to be a stack of them. Um, but as you get older, you know, I guess that time seems to pass by quicker and it's almost like you're on an exponential curve speeding right through the universe. Uh, his comments, uh, William James, is that in youth we have an absolutely new experience every hour of every day, but as each hour passes, we um, convert items into automatic routine, which we hardly notice at all. You know, so the days and the weeks kind of smooth themselves out, and, and they smooth out into con you know, 
contentless units and the years grow hollow and collapse. It's pretty profound and probably a little bit over dramatic, but I feel that this is certainly something that we can see psychologically with memory. Uh, life seems to speed up as we get older because life gets less interesting in a lot of ways, less memorable. Uh, and so, uh, you know, that's something to think about because that's why time seems to just disappear. All right, well, that's, um, uh, you know, that was uh, the uh, why memory is important. I think the other comment I wanted to find up here with the little fat guy with the eyebrows and Socrates is he also mentioned uh, uh, something about the unexamined life is not worth living. I think the author makes that comment, how much more the unremembered life. Uh, so he was trying to be the modern day Socrates on that. That's end of part two, final part three awaits.